Oh yeah. So, greetings from sunny Florida for Noonday Prayer on Friday with our good friends Sybil and Andy Macbeth. We're gathered together to say Noonday Prayers. Our psalm is Psalm 129 and our reading is from John 5 and we have a reflection for All Souls Day as we um, round out the triduum of, of the dead and departed with um, begins with uh, All Hallows Eve, right? Mm -hmm. All Saints Day and now All Souls Day covering the full spectrum of uh, Peeps. Of, of peeps. <laughs> <laughs> so let's begin. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, Lord, make haste, haste to help, help us. us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it, it was, was in the beginning, beginning is, is now, now, and, and will, will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. And our psalm is uh, 129. How about we just bounce back and forth? Go, go right along. Start with you, Sybil. Okay. Loudly. Greatly have they oppressed me since my youth. Let Israel now say. Greatly have they oppressed me since my youth, but they have not prevailed against me. The plowmen plowed upon my back and made their furrows long. The Lord, the righteous one, has cut the cords of the wicked. Let them be put to shame and thrown back, all those who are enemies of Zion. Let them be like grass upon the housetops, which withers before it can be plucked. Which does not fill the hand of the reaper, nor the bosom of him who binds the sheaves. So that those who go by say not so much as, The Lord prosper you. We wish you well in the name of the Lord. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, Father, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit. Spirit. As it was in, in the beginning, beginning is, is now, now and, and will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. And our reading is from John chapter 5. Um, we'd like to read uh, reading verse 24. Very truly I tell you, anyone who hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life, who does not come under judgment, but has passed from death to life. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Be to God. For our reflection, I've chosen the prayers for all the faithfully departed, and we'll say those uh, to, together, maybe start with, by paragraph, if, if you'd like to just go down the line like we did with the psalm. Okay. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Almighty God, who have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord, grant to your whole church in paradise and on earth your light and your peace. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to newness of life, and that through the grave and gate of death we may pass with him to our joyful resurrection. Grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith that your Holy Spirit may lead us in holiness and righteousness all our days. Grant to your faithful people pardon and peace that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Grant to all who mourn a sure confidence in your fatherly care that cast casting all their grief upon you, they may know the consolation of your love. Give courage and faith to those who are bereaved, that they may have strength to meet the days ahead in the comfort of a reasonable and holy hope, in the hope joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. Help us in the midst of things we cannot understand to believe and trust in the communion of saints the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection to life everlasting. 
grant to us with all who have died in the hope of the resurrection to have our consummation and bliss in your eternal and everlasting glory and with all your saints to receive the crown of life which you promise to all who share in the victory of your Son, Jesus Christ. Father of all, we pray for you, for those we love but we no longer see. Grant them your peace. Be, be light per, let light perpetual shine upon them. And in your loving wisdom and almighty power, work in them the good purpose of your perfect will. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, we pray you to set your passion, cross and death, between your judgment and our souls, now in the hour of our death. Give mercy and grace to the living, pardon and rest to the dead, to your holy church peace and concord, and to us sinners everlasting life and glory. Lord Jesus Christ, who by your death have taken away the sting of death, grant to us your servants so to follow in faith where you have led the way that we may at length fall asleep peacefully in you and awake after your likeness for your tender mercy's sake. O Heavenly Father, grant that we who now serve you on earth may at last, together with them, be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Well, those uh, prayers some of you might recognize, are some are taken from the burial office, I think. It's a collection of uh, prayers into a litany covers the whole waterfront, I think, doesn't it? Uh, every aspect of death and questions about afterlife and uh, who's gone before, who we... My favorite of all is those we love and see no longer. Uh, that's uh, always been a great thought to me, those we love and see no longer. It's an easier word than he died, <laughs> right? I like the word died. You like died? Yes. It's I, an honest word, isn't it? Yeah, it's honest. And when people say somebody's passed, right. kind of, can't we just say they died? Right. I mean, because died doesn't, is necessarily a permanent thing. It's what happens in this life. It, someone dies. They're no longer with us. I'm with you. I like It's a good honest <clears throat> word. Yeah, I say passed, and he doesn't like it. What do you mean past? <laughs> they went past where? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I interrupted you, so no, no, please. <laughs> That's what he wants. <laughs> what what struck you, Andrew? The, you you you've said these for many years in funerals, I guess. Yeah, let me let me think for this. This a good Okay. The idea of eternal life has always been a little frightening to me because I don't. I don't want the life I'm living now to go on forever. I mean, after having seen, read the book, Tuck Everlasting, which is basically a kid's book, and the people have found the fountain of youth, it's like, why would you ever do anything today when you can always put it off to tomorrow? Till tomorrow, and then tomorrow, and then tomorrow. It's the fin finitude, the, the finiteness. The infinitude of the future that There'll be, yeah. no, be no motivation. Right, and the finiteness <laughs> of this makes every moment for me more precious. And what, what happens in the afterlife, I don't want it to be a continuation of this life. I, You know, I, being with God eternally, I want to be something more wonderful than I can imagine. Yeah, indeed. This business of life and death and all that... Um, it's just one aspect of our invitation to follow Jesus. And uh, I just love the fact that, you know, wherever we might go, whatever path we might take in this world, um, it's a place that Jesus has gone before us. Gone um, ah, before It just means a lot to me. That's an integral I like that. piece of, in a way that Jesus has gone before. Mm -hmm. And that, that amplifies that our life should imitate Jesus, mm. uh, who's gone before to leave an example, to leave breadcrumbs, to leave a trail. Mm. <laughs> right. 
in the church that I grew up in, one of the tenets was Jesus was the way show. And that fits into what you're talking about. Oh. The, the breadcrumbs or the path is following. Jesus is showing us showing us the way, the way you know, show. Like, that One of the things that hits me is Jesus could really appreciate the things of this world, the bread, the wine, the good stuff, but he also didn't feel like he needed to cling to it. He could, he could right. release it, let it go, give it away. And it was more, so much simpler to me, you know, the life, and now we have all this right. stuff complicated thing <laughs> that we have to have around us and possessiveness mm -hmm. clinginess yeah i mean you know when jesus went from one place to the other he didn't have six suitcases going with him <laughs> yeah, he didn't have a u-haul trailer <laughs> didn't have a u-haul or a pods or anything else when i hear people say um, that they that they're looking forward to death because they'll re be reunited with their friends and family, I, d I don't know if that's even scriptural. If it does, it's a piece of scripture that I don't that you miss that I that I don't know or miss. And my first response is, I really need to be a lot more transformed to be united with the people that I have <laughs> passed. Like, am I grown up enough to be with my mother for eternity? When I come through the gates, will she say, "Are you really wearing that dress to heaven?" <laughs> Great but I need to have a trans, much more transformed heart, and I guess my definition of eternity and life everlasting would be that my heart would be transformed, that I'd be transformed in any way, that much of which is unrecognizable to the me who is me. Right. But maybe the essence of me, whatever piece of that might be any good. <laughs> I think that's a, a really good purpose for celebrating this triduum is to, is to reflect on... Uh, you look forward to the better you. I certainly look better. Look forward to a better me. And I guess it's the task before us, the inch and inch towards our better self, right? But if God, what God created in the beginning was good anyway, then then you well, might still be you. But well, and maybe that tweaked. process <laughs> begins here and then continues in the life everlasting. Mm. That's true. You, well, thank you for your uh, reflections. Let's uh, continue with our, our prayers. prayers. Mm -hmm. Together, our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from, from evil. Lord, hear our prayer and, and let our cry come to you. Let us pray. Okay. O oh God and maker and redeemer of all believers, grant to the faithful departed and the, un the unsurgeable benefits of the passion of your Son that on the day of his appearing they may be manifested as your children through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now let's join your prayers together with those on our prayerish prayer list. Lift our needs to God. We continue to pray for our presiding bishop, Michael Curry, as he recovers well from surgery. For Bill Miller, for Jane, for Tim, Philip, and the Wade family, Oliver, Pearl, Ann, Steve, Dick, Margretta, Charlie, Lisa, Barbara, Phil, Holly, Jan, Dave, Beck, Dick, Joan, Tony, and Pam, for Karen, and Candy, and Julius, Dave, Jen, for Bill Taylor as we bury Bryce tomorrow and celebrate his life. Um, for Cesar, for Keith and David, Marina, Henry, Betty and Branson, Bill, Rick and Randy, Peter, Bunny, Sandy, Eric, Paul, Jennifer, Linda, Dennis, John, 
Jay Ann. We continue to pray for God's vision of a beloved community to be our vision for this world, for our nation, for our parish. We pray for peace around the world, particularly remembering the troubles in Gaza and Israel, the terrible situation, and not forgetting for a moment Ukraine and Syria. We pray for those deployed, Jackson Hummeldorf and Nick Rudnick as they sail into harm's way. And we ask that you uh, add your prayers at home. We lift those to God for His, um, for His grace, intervention, answers, and and in thanksgiving. And we have some thanksgivings. We for... do have thanksgivings. Oh, gosh. Uh, we have birthdays, <clears throat> and we have an anniversary. So we want to wish a happy birthday today to Sonny Matthews, tomorrow to Ann Scharnberg, Charlie Patton. And on Sunday, Betsy Van Vanderwilf, Hayden Bowles, and Alana Walmsley. So we wish you all the very best. May God bless you today and throughout your year. And we have one anniversary. Uh, Sharon and Tim Oswald are celebrating their wedding, their marriage. And may God bless you as well. Amen. And we um, ask God's blessing on our host, Andy and Sybil Macbeth, and give thanks for their life and friendship and for this time together. And if you all and, didn't know, Andy used to be at one time the rector of Eastern Shore Chapel. And uh, with that, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Bye, everyone. Bye. See you around church. We'll be there on Sunday. God's peace. Be good to one another.